Alrighty, well, let's officially welcome everybody. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, my name is Andrew Dauphiny, and I'm the Instruction and Outreach Librarian at the New Jersey State Library. And it is my pleasure to present today, Arthur Finkel, who's going to talk to us about Jewish farming uh, in the United States, specifically the Jewish experience in New Jersey. So um, designated as an advanced practitioner by the Association for Conflict Revolution, Resolution and practicing 30 plus years in human resources administration, Arthur Finkel specializes in labor relations mediation. Listed in Marquis Who, Who's Who of 2011, Who's Who in Government, Who's Who in American Education, and Who's Who in American Law, he has authored 15 books, four book chapters, and 175 plus articles on human resources issues. He's the former director of mediation for the New Jersey Department of Personnel, and he also teaches at Keene University at Empire State College. He is the treasurer of the Shady Brook Rotary Club and leader of the Trenton Jewish Historical Society and Monmouth County, New Jersey Jewish Heritage Museum. So welcome, Art. Thank you for, for talking to us today. Um, before we jump into the presentation, just a few housekeeping items to go over today. Uh, first and foremost, uh, we will be taking your questions at the end of the program today, but you can feel free to submit them at any time using the, the Q&A feature in Zoom, or you can email me directly um, at my email address on the screen, um, or if you want, you can use the, the chat feature as well. Uh, there will be a survey that will be provided at the end of this webinar, as well as in a follow-up email. Um, if you have time, we ask that you please complete the survey. Uh, we really do appreciate all of your feedback. Um, if you're looking for more information on the topic that Art is going to discuss today, you can check out one of his books, uh, Jewish Farming Communities in New Jersey. That's available through, through Amazon and other retailers. So um, if you want to take a deep dive into it, please uh, go ahead and, and look at that item. Uh, one last thing before we go, just a quick overview of the Zoom webinar dashboard. Uh, if you're using a desktop or a laptop, if you're using a mobile device, it's going to look a little different depending on which device you're using, but all of the features will still be there. Um, if you're having any audio problems, there is the audio setting, so you can go and make sure that, that everything is correct there. Um, there is the chat, so if you wanted to wish Art a happy birthday, you're more than welcome to do that, um, or if you have any questions, you can submit them in the chat or use the Q&A function. At any point, if you're having problems, you can also use the raise hand function um, and I will get in contact with you and hopefully be able to solve any of those problems. So uh, without further ado, I'd like to uh, hand it over to Art. Okay, thank you, Andrew. Um, I, I've given this talk <clears throat> a couple times before and um, I, I picked the topic of uh, Jewish farming. Uh, it sounds like an oxymoron. It's not. I had a, a, a first cousin who was a farmer, and um, I can appre I appreciate how difficult farming is. Um, but let me give you um, uh, an overview. The, the first thing you see is uh, the Jewish farmer. That was put out by. Um, the Jewish Colonization Association. Um, and um, this is in English, but it was put out in Yiddish uh, for those uh, immigrants that came over. Uh, and it was a, a basically a, a, a handbook on farming. Um, ag agricultural extension services were uh, few and far between. And Agricultural schools were also few and far between, so the handbooks came in uh, came in quite handy. All right, next, Andrew. Okay, all right. The uh, the the uh, Jewish population in this country came from the Pale of the Settlement. Um, the Pale, uh, which in Latin is uh, the, the uh, boundaries means a palace. It, it was cordoned off for the Jewish population. Jewish population was only allowed, with it with a few exceptions, um, to live in this area. It's four percent of uh, of uh, of Russia, uh, and the people who 
who who came. Uh, it 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 covers uh, uh, now. It covers Russia, uh, the Ukraine, uh, Pol part of Poland, and uh, Lithuania and Latvia. Uh, at, at the time, it was part of um, of of Russia. Uh, the people from the north of this uh, pale of the settlement, that is from Kovno and Vilna and Grodno and uh, and uh, 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 Plock and Corlin, uh, three quarters of these people uh, of the immigrants to the United States came from the northern part of the pale of the settlement. Okay, next. The Jewish Colonization Society is uh, uh, relatively unknown in this country, but it was created in 1891 and, uh, as an uh, uh, English company um, chartered by ba Baron uh, uh, Maurice de Hirsch of, um, of London, Germany, Paris, and uh, uh, places where there uh, where he had branches in his bank. Uh, he had he had one son who 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 died early. After that, he dedicated himself to uh, Jewish philanthropy. Um, he established a society to benefit those who wish to uh, take up work in agriculture. He wanted to change the image. Of the of the Jew, um, uh, who whose image was um, that of a of a parasite, uh, uh, not producing anything. But of course, in Russia, they weren't allowed to produce anything. They weren't allowed to own land. They weren't allowed to uh, be uh, owners of taverns. They weren't. You know, they, they had a lot of restrictions. Um, so, but he wanted them to become farmers. And uh, the, at the time there, um, in 1891, there were um, three and a half million Jews in Russia. And he negotiated with the Tsar that uh, he, would, um, he would provide emigration over a 25 year period uh, from Russia to Argentina so that the uh, Russians will get rid of the so-called Jewish problem. Um, so he's, he wound up sponsoring 16 agricultural developments in the United States, actually more, about 40 of them. Um, and he started out in, uh, in Argentina, believe it or not, uh, early on. The next. All right. There. There is a picture of Baron de Hirsch with mustache. Okay, next. All right. That, it impressed me with the incredible amount of money that he spent. In, 19, in $1917, it would have been uh, $6 trillion. trillion that he invested in this undertaking. And this undertaking was uh, uh, at, you know, uh, at variance with uh, the Jewish position at the time. He wanted them to go back to the, um, back to the soil movement. Um, and the 19, in the 1880s, uh, there was uh, the, uh, there was a movement in the uh, in the United States um, that in, in indicated that 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 there um, that there is a back to the saw movement. There was a small party um, that uh, existed at the time. Um, the, far, the farming is a myth, uh, is one of the myths of uh, of the world that the the, the farmer is um, the true producer. Okay, next. Uh, so, Jewish uh, Colonization Association, after they didn't succeed in, in Argentina and Brazil, 
uh, and they had about 10,000 people that went to Argentina and Brazil, uh, is that they, after experimenting in the United States, the first, the first one that they had um, was uh, four, uh, f four hours out of uh, New Orleans, it was um, it it was a, a farming community, a collective farming community, in a swamp. <laughs> it did not succeed. The malaria and the other tropical diseases, as well as uh, the uh, uh, terrible land, uh, made it very inappropriate. And the the people who were there were not farmers. Um, they knew next to nothing about farming. At any rate, um, the association secured land in New Jersey, southern New Jersey, in Salem County, uh, Cumberland uh, County, and in Cape May County. Um, so that you had a uh, uh, starting in, in Alliance in May of 1882. Alliance is now part of Vineland. Um, Rosahin, uh, Norma, and Carmel are near Alliance, which is uh, um, which which is Vineland. Um, in 1891, um, they looked at all the mistakes that they made in the area and they created Woodbine. Woodbine in 1903 um, had the first all Jewish council uh, because it was populated with, with all Jewish people. Uh, Woodbine had electric lighting, uh, which was uh, very progressive in those times. It had uh, municipal water and sewage, which was uh, extraordinarily progressive, and um, it was uh, that was a, that was a relatively successful farming venture, and uh, it, it it was colonized by uh, the uh, uh, Amolam, uh, which was one of the um, one of the organizations in in uh, in in Russia uh, that um, uh, supported farming. Okay, next. And and if you go down there, uh, you'll see uh, you'll see some remnants, and you'll even see a um, uh, in in Woodbine. Uh, you'll see. Uh, um, a synagogue that has been redone. It hasn't been redone the way it, that it originally was, but but it, but it's there. Um, it, it, and uh, uh, it, it, it's it, it's it's very unusual because it's it's pretty far away for most of us. Uh, it's in Cape May County, uh, but it you know it's uh, it's it, it's it's very good. It's the Aziz. Um, uh, uh, center. Uh, Mr. Aziz uh, created the uh, uh, during during stock market period. He created the ticker tape. <laughs> uh, he came from he, he came from that area. He made a lot of money, and uh, he uh, he provides the money for. Um, the uh, Aziz Community Center. Um, now, over 6,000 Jews immigrated to Argentina in the first three years of uh, its undertaking. There were about 10,000 Jews in Argentina. One of the one of the people I have a, a blog on uh, the internet, and one of the people said that uh, her grandfather came uh, from Russia to Argentina and. Um, he didn't do all that well, but you know, they're in Argentina. I said, if he remained in Russia, um, he or his progeny would have been murdered during World War II. And uh, uh, that was not the reason for why 
why uh, people uh, immigrated or emigrated from uh, from Russia. They were they were poor. Uh, 70, 76% of the Jews in the Pale of Settlement uh, were would need what today would be called public assistance. Uh, they were they were very poor. Uh, they were restricted to, uh, in what they could undertake. Uh, most of them were in merchandising or peddling. Um, um, they were not allowed to own land. Uh, they had all kinds of restrictions, in addition to which uh, they had hundreds of pogroms. Pogroms were uh, uh, organized chaos, uh, not supported by the government, but the government looked the other way um, to uh, make it difficult for Jews to live. And um, there, there are all kinds of programs in, in, um, in, in Russia during this time. So in uh, uh, 1.7 million Jews emigrated from Russia to the United States. And I'm not uh, including uh, the uh, Canada or other uh, countries in, in Europe. Uh, going to Palestine was very difficult in those days because Palestine was a very under, under, uh, underdeveloped country. It was, it was, a, it was a third rate country. Uh, it had all kinds of diseases there. Uh, which the pioneers there, uh, 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 after years, uh, uh, overcame a lot of tropical diseases. Malaria was one of them. Um, so um, the reason for the failure uh, uh, of uh, the farming was that uh, Jews preferred going to the uh, 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 Golda Medina, uh, the uh, Golden State, rather than uh, struggling in the uh, in the Argentine dust and mud, uh, uh, during uh, during the previous decade, the United States population of two hundred fifty thousand Jews doubled, and it increased uh, during the years of the pogroms to the extent that it uh, they. They, they immigrated to the extent of 1. million. All right. There was also a, 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 a trial in, in Brazil, which also failed. Um, most of the Argentines, uh, the Jewish Argentines, uh, availed themselves of educational opportunity and became either business people or professional people in um, Argentina, as well as the United States in the second generation. Next. Next, uh, Andrew. OK. Uh, Jewish farmers in 1928. This is a, uh, this is a citation interest, uh, um, uh, a citation from the Jewish Agricultural Society um, that basically um, there were 80,000 Jewish farmers in 1928 in the United States, um, tilling a million acres and uh, the real estate and property holdings are over 150 million. Um, that's in 1928 dollars. So it's a lot more uh, today. Next. In Southern Jersey, um, you see that, you see where Vineland is. Uh, and the Jewish uh, Colonization Society bought land in Vineland, uh, and it went it went down to Woodbine, which is out of the Cumberland County area, but just out of the Cumberland County area. Um, and um, uh, the the uh, Someone sold them a bill of goods, uh, just like someone sold them um, the swamp in, uh, in New Orleans. Um, the soil there is not 
great soil. It's sandy soil. If you were down in South Jersey, you see it. So sandy soil, uh, you can only grow uh, berries and um, uh, uh, tubers and, you know, uh, trees or corn and all that kind of stuff is not, uh, you know, it, it, it's not, it, it, the, the, uh, the uh, uh, soil is not that enriched for it to, to, um, to um, yield that. Okay, next. Uh, the Jewish colonization organization, and it had, had various sub vengeance uh, of the organization. Um, uh, and I, I should say that uh, in eight, 1891, it was founded. 1898, Baron de Hirsch died. His wife, Clara de Hirsch, a baroness, continued um, the, uh, the um, uh, trust uh, until uh, her demise, and then it was continued subsequently by uh, basically um, uh, very rich German Jews in New York, like Jacob Schiff, um, and uh, and and people of of that. You know, if you ever read Our Crowd, you would you would see. That those folks were involved in the in the continuation of uh, the Jewish Colonization Society. Um, they tried in Cimarron, Oklahoma, uh, Beersheba, Kansas, Clarion, Utah, Happyville, South Carolina. They 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 all failed. Uh, uh, there there were um, well. Next, I'll show you the successes. It wasn't all failures. First of all, for farmers, uh, most farming failed. It's 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 a. Tw I have a cousin who's a farmer. It's a twenty four seven job. Uh, it, 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 it's tough to take a vacation, <laughs> uh, because uh, if you have dairy ca cattle, they have to be milked every day, every day. Uh, if you have uh, any any uh, uh, livestock whatsoever, they have to be taken care of at, uh, every day. And uh, if you have crops, they have to be uh, irrigated every day. So um, it, 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 uh, uh, the successes were in uh, Petaluma, California. Um, that was a poultry area. Uh, Eastern Connecticut had some very good farming communities in Fairfax County in particular, Chesterfield, Connecticut. In New York, uh, the Sullivan and Ulster counties is where the Catskills are. Now, the Catskills were successful not only because of the farms, but because uh, they had uh, people who took their vacations. And it, it was... Uh, American myth that for people in the cities to get the, the country air was uh, was very salubrious. Uh, so uh, so uh, so the Catskills, uh, while they were farms, really became uh, really made it because of of the uh, of the recreational opportunities in, in Flemington. After all the kinks were worked out uh, of, of the farming in in the su in southern New Jersey, um, it, it became very very successful. Flemington it, it was also bought by the uh, by the uh, uh, Jewish Colonization Society. Flemington is in the middle of the state, and they had the uh, advantage of having the alluvial moraine from the last ice age dump the, the wonderful soil in the middle of New Jersey and in, in, in Pennsylvania too. Lush uh, farmland. Okay, next. next. 
Okay. The uh, demographics uh, were uh, that, it, it, you know, most of the Russian Jews settled in New York City. Uh, not all, but most. Uh, the, uh, of the 1.7 million who came to the United States, 88,000 went beyond New York and, and the East Coast. Uh, were they farmers? Probably not, but no records exist. It, you have somebody like um, uh, Levi Strauss that went to the gold rush. Well, he didn't make any money in gold. He made jeans and uh, he became successful in that. Okay, next. Uh, these are the Jewish demographics of the number of Jews in the United States uh, from 1790 to 1920. You have to understand uh, the, the scale. In the Battle of Trenton, the population of Trenton in 1776 was 2,500. Uh, so you get uh, the farming communities were uh, were not heavily populated. Uh, Woodbine had about four thousand people in it, um, and but the the uh, the houses were were far uh, far apart. So a community center became a very attractive uh, uh, way to for everybody to meet. All right, next. All right. Phase two of the farming communities was the poultry farming. We were talking uh, initially about um, about produce and cattle in uh, Flemington, and I'll, I'll tell you later about um, how the uh, cattle farms. Uh, right, but in poultry farming um, was like from 1925 to 1954, um, poultry farming became um, uh, very big. Uh, num number one, uh, uh, number one, Jewish people traditionally uh, ate chicken. Um, number two, during World War II, um, there was ration on meat. And chicken became the other meat um, because it, it was meat, uh, but from a chicken, um, it had no, you know, it, what it, it was. Uh, nobody other than 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 Jews really had had chicken, but um, they got the opportunity of um, of uh, being uh, the the other meat because of uh, the rationing system in. Uh, 1954, um, the, um, the government subsidy of eggs uh, ceased and uh, poultry farming basically ceased um, because uh, the subsidy of the eggs were, were, not, were not there anymore. So most of the poultry farmer, uh, farming uh, that you see, most of the poultry farmers lasted maybe until the 1960s. Uh, but 1954 was a, uh, uh, a very important year. Next. Uh, okay, so I have the poultry farm. Here's a, a, a picture of Ben Wettstein uh, in, uh, I think he's in Tom's River. Um, Farmingdale, uh, which is now the bottom of a dam, uh, was uh, a, a very uh, famous poultry area, and um, a, a, a book uh, was written about it um, by a uh, by a former resident, um, Gertrude Dombrowski, who taught it at Princeton. Roosevelt, New Jersey, was interesting. Um, it, Roosevelt, New Jersey, is outside of. Um, Allentown, New Jersey, which is, out, is outside of Heightstown. Roosevelt, New Jersey was started uh, with um, the labor unions. It was a, a whole New York venture. Um, 
it failed. It failed miserably. It failed not only in farming, but it failed in, in merchandising. Ben Shan lived there. Uh, ben Shan, um, the artist, and um, it, he uh, had such a draw that it became an artist community. And Roosevelt's known as an artist community now. Um, they got the land from the New, De New Deal. Uh, there was a Benjamin Brown who um, had some, um, some pull in the New Deal and he got uh, this homestead uh, land from that, that the government provided in some of the improvements. All right. All right, now, uh, Tom's River was also important. Next. One of the things that we take for granted, that I took for granted at any rate, was uh, the modern conveniences. Um, the, first of all, when we sent somebody to the moon in 1969, I, I asked my aunt who was elderly, What's the best thing that you have seen? Uh, she was born in the 1890s. What's the best thing? What's thing? What's the best thing that you've seen uh, since you've grown? You know, there's there's cars and there's uh, vacuum cleaners and uh, 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 electric washers and dryers. And but you know what she said? <laughs> she said indoor plumbing because she. Uh, lived in the city, and she uh, and uh, and and the family had an outhouse like everyone else. Well, in the farm area, uh, the uh, indoor electricity and indoor plumbing uh, uh, came uh, if they were lucky in the 30s, certainly in the 40s, but uh, they they were they were missed uh, prior to that. They were one of the the last folks who got uh, 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 indoor electricity. Um, so, uh, and then the tractor came in the 1920s. Um, you could plow uh, an acre and a, an acre and a quarter um, with uh, a horse plow. Uh, a, a tractor could do a hundred acres. Okay. Uh, so that was a big improvement uh, on that. And the Jewish Colonization Association um, provided the, um, the, the farmers with the knowledge of uh, tractors and got deals for them. Okay, next. All right, the autos. Uh, is, again, the tractors. Uh, I just wanted to tell you the... Uh, the prices of the cars, the, the Model A was um, $350, this is 1908 uh, money and $750, you know, yeah, there, there, there was a, there was a, 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 of course, the Lamborghini of its day, which was $8,000, but uh, nobody could afford that, at, at least on the farm. Next. Uh, the family income, as you see, uh, um, if you compare it today, it's really frightening because those people in the top 1% are only 2.3%. And um, today, uh, it's, it's a lot more. Uh, and there isn't as much uh, uh, middle class as there were uh, in the 1920s. Okay, next, the farming income in the 1920s, while uh, there was uh, relatively uh, uh, good times in the, in the 20s, uh, the floppers and all that kind of stuff, there was a farm depression. And um, the, uh, you, you, you can see that the average income in the farm from the 20s and 30s was down. Okay, next. Poultry farming, uh, I, I, I talked about that before. Uh, and 
There's a picture of uh, my favorite hen. Next. Uh, this, this is the Lehigh Station in Flemington. It's still there. Uh, what happened in, uh, in towns in New Jersey, um, we have a unique thing called holes in the donut. Um, we have, um, when there is a, a, a railroad station, um, the farmers didn't want to pay for the upkeep of the city. Um, so they create, they created, uh, people created um, their own cities. So there was Flemington with a railroad station, but all around it was Ringo's and, and, uh, and all, all other uh, uh, areas uh, that were farming areas. Flemington was just the middle of the town. Um, the same thing happened in, uh, in, in, in Lambertville. Uh, in in uh, in the area where I live, around Mercer County, uh, it, there there was a center in in the uh, where where there was a, a railroad depot, and uh, then basically it was all farming. Next, uh, this was their Union Hotel uh, during the famous Houtman trial. Uh, the the uh, the, the population of Flemington was about 5,000. They had about 10,000 reporters <laughs> and they stayed mostly at the Union Hotel. It's being refurbished now. It's, it's in Flemington. Okay, next. Um, here's the DeVore farm. This is my, my cousin's farm. Um, you'll see it um, at the Flemington Circle where Root 12 goes off. Um, they, um, the, the grandfather came over in 1907. He got some training, six weeks training in Long Island from uh, the, the Jewish Colonization Association. Uh, the Jewish Colonization um uh, organization bought land but uh did not give it it was um it, it was uh they gave a mortgage a 20-year mortgage to be paid because they didn't want to uh, give anything away they wanted people to be responsible and um he um he he had uh he had three son three sons um two of them uh, t took care of the farm. One of them lived in Wisconsin. He was in, uh, he was in charge of the um, of the marketing uh, to sell the livestock, uh, the cattle. That they, they had horses, but uh, they uh, and they had dairy cows. But they maintained um, themselves in in, uh, in 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 non dairy cows cattle. Okay, next. Uh, if you, there's a website that uh, I I did a long time ago, and I found I found it. Uh, there's a website on, uh, on basically on what I uh, have indicated to you today, um, plus a little bit more. Uh, so if you want to go on the website uh, on the internet, is Jewish Farmers in America. Uh, and you know, just just put that in in your uh, in your browser, and and it'll come up. Next, there's the Wetstein Farm. Uh, I knew, I I knew the Wetsteins. Yeah, the, their routine was when they went to school. They got up five o'clock. They fed the chickens, uh, and they took care of the chickens. And by seven o'clock, they went to school. Then when they got home, they took care of the chickens. It, 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 was, it, it was a lot of work. And right, next. Uh, here is um, a, a book that I uh, published uh, 
few years ago on uh, Jewish farming communities in New Jersey. Um, and New Jersey has, uh, is unique in the sense that um, most of the, uh, the, the original um, colonies in New Jersey uh, were in New Jersey. And um, some of the more, uh, some of the more successful farms were, were in New Jersey. There were also su successful farms in, in, in uh, as I said, in, uh, in, in Connecticut and Michigan and California, um, but they were kind of few and far between. And, you know, Ulster and Sullivan County, but that was more recreational than it was farming. So, um, that's, I think, it. What, what's the next, uh, is the next slide the end? Yeah, okay. All right, questions? All righty, thank you, Art. Yes, if anybody does have any questions, please, uh, you can submit them using the chat feature or the, the Q&A button, um, and we'll be happy to, to answer them. Um, there's a question about uh, where to get a copy of your book, Arthur. Um, go to Amazon. All right. And then uh, when was the Jewish Farmer Handbook from? And how can I get a copy? Uh, the Jewish Farming Handbook um, was uh, ceased to exist in the 1930s. It was published by the Jewish um, Colonization Association. Um, and um, there, 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 there may be a couple of facsimiles, but I would, I would contact uh, uh, either the Jewish Colonization Association, if it still exists, or uh, one of the Jewish historical societies. Uh, maybe they have a, a facsimile publication. What got you interested in this research? Well, I have a cousin who's a farmer and um, Jewish farming is uh, like uh, yeah, you and I would, would think would be an oxymoron. Um, uh, what, the, what Jewish farming tried to do was to make a new Jew um, who was not uh, parasitical in, uh, in, in society, but rather contributed to society, worked the land, worked the soil, uh, and became assimilated in uh, a new society. Now, interestingly enough, there was a very, very uh, successful farming venture in the Soviet Union, which, no, which very few people know about. And it, from 1923, to 1937, there were 100,000 farmers, Jewish farmers, collective farmers, um, collectivization. Um, the, uh, the, the farming in, uh, uh, in, in that, they, they were the true communists. They, they collectivized. The, the uh, Bolshevists weren't communists. They were, they, they, they they were more um, uh, uh, dictatorial. They they certainly uh, didn't didn't share too much, but um, because the Russian Revolution, which was really about five revolutions, um, uh, left the country uh, so badly uh, organized that they didn't have control over uh, this area until uh, 1937, when uh, the uh, Jewish colon uh, colonists after 13 years ceased operation because uh, they said it was, uh, it, it was anti-Russian or something like that. But it really was true collectivization. Um, and 100,000, and it, it was successful. Uh, as <laughs> during that time, uh, the uh, the the uh, Bolshevists um, starved the Ukrainians um, because they owned farms. Uh, here, the Jews 
collectivize the farms and they left them alone. Uh, your slide showed Carton Road. Did you mean Garton Road with a G instead of a, a G? Okay. Uh, was Garton Road just a street or was it one of the communities? No, it was a small community. It was a small community, uh, uh, you know, and maybe had 50 people, uh, 50 families in it or, you know, uh, the uh, garden and, you know, all that kind of stuff was, uh, uh, I, I, I knew somebody from Rosenheim um, and uh, uh, it, th they were all small communities. In one community, in Norma, uh, Ma M Maurice Fells. Now, some of you may uh, remember Fells Instant Naphtha. Uh, it was it was a, a, a soap a, a detergent uh, or whatever, and um, he he uh, uh, he provided for a cannery in Norma, so that um, the um, produce didn't go to waste, and they could uh, they could have a cannery. Um, they also during the uh, during the winter, uh, when uh, there wasn't much income, they they also uh, would uh, go generally in, into uh, into um, the needle trades uh, in Philadelphia. Um, it, it 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 had a pretty good. Uh, uh, transportation system where they were, and they were near Philadelphia, and um, that was a, a a pretty big conduit. Uh, could you speak to Jewish farming and the Catskills before it became an entertainment area? Well, Jewish, there were always Jewish farms in the Catskills. Um, one of the things that I learned is that in uh, in um, in Poland, there were cottages uh, where people uh, uh, recreated. Um, they emulated those cottages in the farm areas, and the um, part of the. Part of the thing was that you, you could have fresh uh, uh, eggs and fresh chicken and fresh everything, um, and that was uh, some of the some of the uh, come on to people who toiled in the city, and um, that toiling was tough. Uh, they they were 55, 60 hours a week in. Uh, in, 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 in the garment industry, at least 85% of the Jews did, and they needed to, to get away. And so they, they, they went to the mountains, and the closest mountains were the Catskills. Two famous artists, George Siegel and his best friend, whose name slips my mind, uh, lived across the street from him on Davidson Mill Road off 130 began as chicken farmers. Yes. Their, their chicken coops became their studios. Was that yes. unusual or something that happened often? Well, uh, Siegel, Siegel was, 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 was an artist. He was a famous artist. Um, um, that was, uh, that was unusual. Mo most of the people like the, the first um, dean of agriculture at uh, at at, um, uh, at Rutgers came from Alliance, um, and um, uh, uh, the second generation availed themselves of the education which they couldn't get in Russia, and they became professional people. This this guy happened to uh, go into farming because that was his background but other people uh left and uh not you know besides ben sean and and uh and 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 siegel uh i can't think of any uh uh, uh one of the things in judaism um that is interesting is that um representations of things are not allowed um, 
uh, like statuary and, and stuff like that. And that's only been in the last 150 years. Magdalene um, was uh, European, he was Jewish. Um, he was the exception. Uh, did ORT have any hand in training farmers in Russia? Yeah, uh, yes. Um, uh, the Organization for Rehabilitation um, uh, had, had a role. The Joint Distribution uh, Committee had a role, uh, the main role. Um, the uh, Jewish uh, Colonization Association had a role. The uh, Alliance Universal uh, had a role, which is how Alliance got its name, because um, it was uh, in Paris. Uh, the, it was there before uh, the Jewish Colonization Association. So, um, yeah, there were a lot of organizations that, uh, that, that had a role in, in that uh, particular successful farming uh, enterprise. There's people in the chat that have been sharing family stories, um, you know, about different areas where their their ancestors had settled and and farmed. Um, so uh, it's def it was definitely impactful. Um, can you speak uh, uh, any more to the Alliance Colony in particular? The, the Alliance Colony, if you go there today, uh, they have a they have a cemetery there. A couple of stories about the Alliance Colony. Um, they have a cemetery there, and um, they have as uh, they moved the synagogue uh, near the cemetery, so it's the original synagogue in Alliance. Um, then they had streets named after the benefactors, and um, they, the uh, city fathers were going to change the names of the streets because they didn't know who these people were. They didn't know who Jacob Schiff was or, or uh, 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 Baron de Hirsch or Clara de Hirsch or any, you know, they, they had no idea who these people were. And um, the, the, there was a, an attorney uh, there, uh, a wonderful man, and he, 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 he told them the history of the naming of the streets. It, it, it was just a, a small part of Vineland, but uh, they retained the name of the streets. So, you know, the bottom line is that New Jersey has a, a, a legitimate history in farming, in Jewish farming. And um, in uh, um, beginning colonies of Jewish farmers. All right. Uh, uh, for the first, from, from uh, 18, 1890 to about 1920, then there were uh, poultry farming uh, that was big time until the 50s. And um, if you go to see farms today, uh, you won't see. But my cousin became a real estate developer um, in the last 10 years of his life because he was, he was selling off acreage for, um, for uh, housing communities. All right. Well, it looks like that is all the questions that we have. So uh, I'd just like to thank you, Art, for, for joining us today in our celebration of Jewish American Heritage Month. Um, you know, it's, this is a, a wonderful gem of New Jersey history and Jewish history um, that has impacted a lot of people. So thank you for all the work you've done. All right, I'd like to thank the people who, um, who um, took the time out to uh, listen to me. I, uh, I appreciate that. And I appreciate the library for um, uh, considering the, this undertaking. So, all right. 
Well, uh, I think we'll go ahead and, and end the program there, but I just like to, to thank you, Art, thank everybody who attended today. Um, this is, program is being recorded, so uh, look out for a link in your email that'll be sent once it's up uh, up and running. So, uh, but with is that- the, is, is the premiere gonna be at Radio City Musical? <laughs> if only we had that budget, Art. <laughs> So, but I just like to say uh, to everybody, be safe, be well, and hopefully we can see you soon. Yes, be well. And thank you.